So welcome back to the Behind the Team. Today we'll be talking about Sakiga Harrigan and today we'll be talking about the battlefield setup. So let's get into it. The day of the battle also was great significance to Tokugawa Ieyasu because that was the day that his actually his firstborn son Nobuyasu was told to commit seppuku or ritual suicide when he was under a lord and that lord suspected him being traitorous and wanted to test his loyalty. So he ordered that Nobuyasu under very weak pretenses was guilty and that he had to kill himself. For the family to carry on successfully, Nobuyasu gave one of the ultimate sacrifices and committed ritual suicide. And from one source that I read, um, Eyasu actually kept the sword that basically beheaded his son. In ritual suicide, there's always what's called a second. A second meaning the person who actually gives you mercy and cuts off your head so that you don't literally suffer 20 minutes of agonizing, you know, pain as you bleed out from your guts. So basically, you can see how Eyasu must have felt that his dead son, who basically died for the family name, must have been looking over him. Now, getting to the situation of Sekigahara itself, I would first like to preface some stuff I've talked about before. The first is, of course, on the deals that Eyasu knew that he had basically gotten from certain daimyo. The first, of course, and important one, is from the Kikawa clan. Now, the Kikawa were an affiliate clan to the Mori. And if you remember, Mori Terumoto was the commander-in-chief of the entire Western Army. And what Kikawa promised was that at the time of importance, the Mori would not fight against Tokugawa, basically meaning the Battle of Sigahara itself. And that's also why you remember that a lot of the little sieges still have Mori troops in them. The other is, of course, Kobakawa Hideki. He also made a promise to Eiyatsu, saying how he regretted joining the Western side, and now he saw the light and promised Tokugawa on the important moment itself, he also would not fight. It was a very painful decision for Kobayakawa Hideki. It's a very sad situation um, and you must pity the man. He was really young, uh, firstly, not past his 20s. And here's a guy who basically had very conflicting, honorable situations he had to deal with. One, he had been raised by Toyotomi Hideyoshi and felt a deep loyalty to the Toyotomi clan. At the same time, it was Mitsunari who almost got him killed because of what happened in Korea, which you can't really blame him. If you want to know what happened, I'll put a link below to that video. And it was Iyasu actually who saved his life, basically, because he reconciled Hideyoshi with Kobakawa Hideki. In fact, he was basically so conflicted on the situation, he even went to see Hideyoshi's um, widow, Nene. He asked her what he should do. And she said basically to follow his conscience. Strangely to say that meant basically following Ieyasu. Tokugawa or even Ishida knew that the battle had to take place here. It had to take place at the crossroads of Sekigahara. Alright, good. That was basically the only way to Soyama, which was where Ishida Mitsunari's base is. And the whole goal was basically him. They had to stop him or he had to succeed here. So basically this was where the battle had to take place. Now due to the geography and everything, it was very, very narrow. And, you know, even with so many samurai, a lot of the samurai themselves could not fight due to the way that the battlefield was so cramped. On the day before the Battle of Sekigahara, it was raining extremely heavily. And the rain was so thick that visibility was reduced to a minimum. And on top of that, they were marching at night. And they were, it was raining so hard that literally for the Western Army, there are accounts of how units would bump into each other and causing delays and of course more importantly big commotions because people thought they were being flanked or rear attacked and on note for the um rain although bad for the strategic situation it might have been good for the smell situation because anyone who studies samurai history know it takes a lot at least for the major daimyo and everything the more intricate samurai armor you know it takes minutes to tie the knots and everything so therefore, for as long as the situation needed, battle-wise or strategy-wise or campaign-wise, there are many accounts of uh, samurai never taking off their uh, armor even for a week or more. I think the rain was basically a mini shower to clear off the dirt. But it was still very uncomfortable, of course, to sleep in the wet clothes that they had to. So because, again, they didn't take it off. And on top of that, to make things worse, uh, after the rain, basically, you had a very deep fog, which hindered visibility almost or worse than the rain and when basically Mitsunari arrived first thing he did actually was to go see Kobakawa Hideki 
and praised him on basically setting himself in a very good position overlooking the road. Here's the interesting part. I was very surprised to read this. He actually told Hideki that he knew about the rumors about the Mori basically turning against him, that they would not fight. But I think he knew that basically Mori were basically playing both sides, just seeing who was going to come out on top and joining that side. So to ensure that the Mori would join his side, he needed to give them a decisive victory situation. So he actually depended on Kobakawa Hideki to flank Eiyatsu. So he said when he shot the flare that he needed Hideki to come down, that would actually turn the Mori to their side. So in the overall strategy, the Western army deployed their army in what in Chinese ancient text called the Crane's Wings. And the idea was pretty simple, that the wings would come out and envelop the person in the middle. So Tokugawa will come in through the valley and what Ishida missionary and Western army strategy was was basically to put themselves in on several of the hills and what will happen is that Tokugawa will come in and they been in, in the middle of the valley as the army struck in basically the armies were hit on all four sides boxing Tokugawa in, even to the point where he had no escape route. They basically had superior terrain but Tokugawa is not a stupid man and the reason why he actually took the risk instead of waiting for his son to arrive with 36,000 more men is because he knew about the defections and he counted that he basically had the better army, he knew the better situation, and he basically could trust that most of the people fighting for Mitsunari were half-hearted. Now, in fact, first contact between both sides was actually not as what most um, documentaries put in the daytime. It actually started at 4am, and but this was during setup, and this is to show how bad the visibility was. Forward units actually got into contact with each other, and at 4am there was a minor minor scuffle and basically Tokugawa forces pulled back. Both armies started to set up. And anecdote wise, there were many campfires of the Western Army side. And Tokugawa basically, with his generals around him, looked at all these campfires and said, and said how he could easily defeat them all. He probably was referring to the fact of the little trick he taught his generals. And the story basically goes that Tokugawa had placed clamshells into a room edge to edge. Basically the whole floor was covered in clamshells and he told his generals to come in and basically guess how many clamshells were on the floor. And you know people guessed that basically there were 500 and some guessed that there were a thousand and so on. And actually how many there were he laughed and said that there was only 300 and he always told them that you know even though the enemy army will always look bigger that it might just be an overestimation. Telling them to judge the situation as carefully and accurately as possible and that to the naked eyes numbers can be deceiving and on a very interesting note uh in the battle of sekigahara miyamoto musashi the famous swordsman of the niten ryu which is the um, way of fighting with both the katana long sword and the wakasashi short sword was actually at the battle of sekigahara fighting under Ukita Hideie's um, force. Now there's no hard great evidence to show that he was in this unit and everything like that. After both armies had set up, and this was the scary part, because when the fog lifted, both armies were actually surprised at how close they were. In fact, in the source I read, they said that they were so close that a man could actually reach the other side by a few minutes run. And you must imagine that this caused quite a stir when um, they were supposedly supposed to deploy much further apart. So in conclusion, that is the setup of Sekigara. Next time we'll start with the contact and the real fight for Japan in the battle of Sekigahara itself. Let me know what you think, any information you have and everything or any questions you have. So thank you very much. Till next week.